Hi, I'm John Duvetter with the North Dakota State University Extension Service. I'm an area livestock specialist and I'm pleased to welcome you to our program on background in calves in 2015. Each fall our ranchers have to make some production and marketing plans and typically about half of them wean their calves and feed them for a period of time to heavier weights which we call backgrounding. The fundamentals and factors which go into the profitability of this uh, enterprise vary quite a bit from year to year. We've had recent years of extremely high grain prices. We've had years of rising, rapidly rising cattle prices during this backgrounding phase. But today, 2015, we're faced with fairly cheap, abundant feed and a cattle market which has been on the downslide. So I think to get things started here and get in a little insight into the economics of what the potential is for backgrounding this year, I'm going to ask a few questions of our livestock marketing economist, Tim Petrie, who's stationed at the NDSU campus in Fargo. So Tim, I guess, you know, this market's really been moving a lot, mostly down. What are your price expectations for the 550 pound kind of va vaccinated calf coming off the cow going into the market today? Yeah, sure, I agree that we really have had a volatile market with last year record high increases, and then the last couple of months we've had a big downtrend. Uh, main causes for the decline being a contra-seasonal downward fed cattle market caused by many factors including a backlog of heavy cattle and record weights, also record high pork production, and you're going to hear record a lot today, record high pork and poultry production and a stagnant export market. So. Uh, yeah, price expectations is a very good question, uh, somewhat difficult to answer probably due to the wide range in prices for the same weight and grade of calves at the same uh, market. Uh, again, due to many factors such as are they weaned or unweaned, uh, are preconditioned, do they have health programs and so on. So uh, I expect another 20 to $30 range like kind of happened last year and in prices at the same calves at the same market and so uh, as we can see in the chart we have a more normal seasonal pattern this year with declining prices in the second half compared to last year when they went up every year so keep that in mind um, we are expecting calf prices to be about 25 to 30 cent percent lower than last year so for example a 550 steer last year that brought 280 is closer to 200 dollars even to 210 this year uh, of course, every market has good news and bad news. For those selling calves, the bad news is we're below last year and probably below earlier expectations of a few months ago, but the good news is we still have the second highest prices ever. But for those buying calves, it's still gonna mean that they're gonna have to come up with a lot of money. I think we'll sell a lot of steer calves in that 195 to 210 area. And again, like always, heifers are really discounted this time of the year, $20 or for the lower end, even more. So uh, that puts them in about 175 to 190. Sometimes we see some preferences for the real light calves, especially when we have a good winter wheat crop down south and they need some grazing animals. I would think with the price of wheat this year not looking too optimistic, there'd be some interest in grazing. What do we see on the slide on the weight classes between lights and heavy? Okay, yeah, well, we really haven't had a good test of light calves yet because we have such good conditions out in North Dakota and there hasn't been much weaning or light calves brought to market. Uh, but for sure the price slide is a lot less than it has been the last couple of years. There are several reasons for that. Uh, most of the calves coming to market now are not weaned or preconditioned and are balling calves and that's typical of an early market. Again, not many being sold. You mentioned winter wheat and that is the big one. Uh, Winter wheat planting is way behind schedule, particularly in Texas and Oklahoma, and it's dry down there. And so uh, that market has not materialized yet with the weather pattern where we, they are expecting rain and we hope that we get it, but so far that has not materialized. And so uh, the market is really encouraging producers to wean and precondition calves. Looking at the charts, for instance, for last week, uh, average 550 steers were about 205, but the 750 to eights were only $10 behind at 195. So uh, last year the market was $40 different. So the, we need that winter wheat crop to really materialize to, to get any spark in those lighter calves. Well, you, you've given us a pretty good indication where she's trading in this early market, and uh, also said they were kind of seasonally normal, trying to 
slide down as the, the runs of calves come to town. Can we expect some, uh, when we can hit a seasonal low, and when, when can we expect some recovery, or is this all guessing games? Well, yeah, well, that's a good question, and yeah, calves do usually reach a seasonal low in November when all the cattle come off of pastures and the big runs hit the market. As the chart shows, the market has already declined since August about 20 to 25 percent. So the big seasonal decline is behind us. In fact, it's one of the largest in history declines here in the last couple of months. So um, some weakness still may occur, especially in those unweaned calves without a health program or, uh, you know, that are the less optimistic calves there. But uh, uh, and, you know, there's a lot of volatility and certainty in the market which causes buyers to be a little bit more reluctant on those uh, calves that don't have a health program and so on. But if we can get some rain in the winter wheat belt and get some seasonal strength back in the feeder, in the fed cattle market, well, that is which is possible, that would support prices. Uh, however, we're not going to go back to last year's prices for sure. And, Cyclically, we are on the downtrend, so we need to keep that in mind. Well, we know backgrounding works really well when you're in a rising market, because then the price of cattle get more valuable every day. You got mm -hmm. them, and you feed them, and take care of them. Uh, big question now is, what are these six, seven, eight hundred pound feeders going to be worth come January, February, March? Because if we had a good idea on that, then we'd kind of know how this is going to pan out. Yeah, that's always the sixty-four dollar question. And while calf prices tend to increase after the first of the year, the heavier weights often do decline after the first of the year. Would be a normal seasonal pattern. However, the range in prices for those heavier weight cattle do narrow because they have been weaned, they have had a health program, and so on. Uh, January to March feeder cattle futures are trading below cash prices now. In fact, just a couple of weeks ago, they were a lot lower. They've rebounded 10 to $12, so we've got January futures in at about 180 now, and the March futures in a dollar or so lower than that. Uh, still below the CME cash settlement price, which is all 650 to 850 calves, so the futures is still discounted to the current cash market. So I think. Uh, as a first step, we do have to look at the futures market as a target. Uh, hopefully we can get some strength, as I mentioned before, back in that fed cattle market. And we can do better than that, but also keep in mind that there's always risk in a volatile market, so producers need to keep that in mind as well. Well, we got a little idea where the cattle are trading, where they might be going, using the futures as a bit of a guide. Feed is fairly cheap, interest is kind of low, fuel cost is down quite a bit. What would be your cost of gain target for calves doing that two to two and a half a day in a backgrounding program? Yeah, okay, feed prices do vary quite a bit across the state and we do have a wide variety of feedstuffs and speakers later are gonna discuss some of those. Uh, it even depends on if you're selling corn to the elevator versus buying corn, there might be a 30 cent right. difference there. So that obviously affects our uh, bottom line. But you know, I think now we should look at the low 50s for a cost again. Some certainly with lower feed costs and lot costs and so on will do it in the 40s. A few might even be up in the 60s, but let's shoot for those lower uh, $50 range is a good starting point. Well, that's kind of, with those kind of cost of gain projections and uh, kind of our uh, slide on the weight classes narrowing up this year, when you put it all together, what's the budget show? Is there a little room here to make some money yeah. back around calves? Yeah, absolutely. On my website, I have an Excel spreadsheet that producers can uh, use, plug in their own information. There's also a calf web break even budget there. So in the example you see on the screen now, I just brought in a 550 weight calf at $205 and then a 750 calf out at $175 in January, March, whatever you want to use. I, have a two and three quarter pound of gain, uh, corn at $3. Again, corn is kind of all over the board. My example shows about a $50 per head return. And interestingly enough, I went back to last year at this time when calf prices were a lot higher, 280 calves. We were projecting 230 out, came out to $50 last year at this time. So the market does try to, I think, uh, encourage some backgrounding and, and, and some return there and very similar to last year, but you know, it looks like we can background calves. As we all know, however, there are many factors that affect calf prices and 
there is risk and we've seen that in the last couple of years but that's how it looks right now well thank you tim for sharing those uh insights into the economics maybe a background this year is there anything else you want to pass along as we close well uh you know uh, again going back to that wide range in calf prices uh if you look at the bottom level and, and add value to some calves, that helps. Heifers are always discounted this time of the year and uh, sometimes are really a, a nice market class to background because every 50 pounds we gain prices on steer calves. So, uh, you know, just uh, look for some of the best opportunities there for making some money. Thanks.